welcoming in a new member of the Alabama football team, outstanding uh, high school player here at Northridge High School, Gabriel Pugh, is with us. And James, this is what's neat, is I, I texted Gabriel this morning, I said, hey, can you get on with us uh, around 10 o'clock? And he said, if you don't mind me being out of breath, because I'm going to be working out. I said, no problem. So, Gabe, we appreciate you jumping on with us and, and letting us interrupt your workout this morning. Oh, uh, Thanks for having me on, Gary. It's a dream come true. It really did. Well, man, good to have you. Hey, listen, uh, tell us about the decision um, to, to attend Alabama. Now, we know long snappers are a position where nobody notices them until they make a bad snap. Let's be honest. That's just the nature of the position. Of course, you're also an outstanding offensive lineman. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, you had some opportunities. You were recruited by a number of schools, and uh, you chose to stay home and, and go to Alabama. Why did you make that decision? Really, it was just about the hard work I saw over there, just everything they did, just the staff members making sure we're all taken care of. And when I was over visiting, we were just chewing the light room, and I saw about 30 players in the practice facility just running, lifting, what do they need to do to get better? Not because the coach told them to, because they wanted to, and they want to be better than their opponent, and that's the atmosphere I want to be a part of. Outstanding. Uh, great ceremony yesterday morning at, at Northridge High School. Your parents, Coach Vickery, the student body. Of course, we were there from the television station covering it. Um, you said kind of a, 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 all this is probably a dream come true, but what's that like when you get to have a ceremony like that, have your classmates there? Uh, I mean, I imagine that's got to be very, very, very special feeling of accomplishment. I don't have any words for it, to be honest. It was just almost an out-of-body experience. Just Growing up, everyone just loved Alabama football, and they always watched it, being a part of that program and being a part of that group of two or three guys from Northridge who joined and played for Alabama and eventually went out to the pros. It's just an amazing, amazing experience. All right, you're coming to Alabama as a priority walk-on, which is a, a recruited player that's not initially on scholarship. Certainly you hope to earn one. You had some scholarship offers that you turned down to uh, take this uh, take this spot at Alabama. I want to get into uh, when you're, again, uh, you're a good offensive lineman. I think down the road uh, there's a chance that you could factor in on the offensive line. But when you're a specialist, uh, a place kicker, a punter, um, a snapper in your case, uh, it's, it's a little bit different. Some schools uh, have their snapper in place. Some don't. Alabama's got a snapper in Thomas Fletcher, but he's a couple years ahead of you. What's that recruiting process like? And I know you know you can't relate to a quarterback or running back because that's not the position you play. But when you're a specialist, uh, is it different? Do you feel like being recruited as a specialist than it is as a, a position player? Oh yes, sir, absolutely. It's um, basically for specialists. Really, the way to get exposure is you go to camps like Rubio, Coles, right. or a great coach of mine, Mike McCabe, and. Basically, those rankings call to see you because they, they say, hey, I want a long snap. They're going to look at the list and see who's up there and who meets their needs. And then they'll call you. They'll probably bring you to camp. And then if you do good in camp, then you have a shot at getting a preferred walk-on. But scholarships are kind of hard to come by your first year. Because most head coaches don't want to scholarship a guy that hasn't proven himself yet, especially as a specialist. They're not going to have more than one like long snapper, punter, kicker, mm -hmm. on the scholarship at that time. So for, I think for most positions, if you have a really good fill, that's really how you get recruited. But you have to, I feel like especially to prove yourself a little bit more because there's a thousand other guys that can choose a set of you and you got to prove why you're special. Absolutely. That's why it's uh, so so neat that Alabama wants you there. Are you 6'5 and 275 pounds and a heck of a high school offensive lineman? And, uh, you know, I not, not that there aren't some – long snappers that are bigger guys, but most long snappers usually are, and I see are 6'1", 6'2", maybe 210, 215 pounds. How did you start long snapping? How did you get into that aspect of football? Well, that's pretty interesting because I started playing football my seventh grade year. I started as a center, and really the only reason they put me in is because I could snap the ball and spiral to his hip just about every time. And so he wanted me to look long snap in middle school, but I wasn't very good at it at the time. So I got some outside help, and I started learning a little bit, started putting the mechanics together. And then once I got to high school, they said, if you're a long snapper, come out here and try out. And I was one start in high school more than anything. And so I went out and tried out. I had a perfect day, but I had a lot better day than most people out there. And just throughout the season, I kept working on my technique. And I was such a team's coach, Coach Bothwell, after the season. Which was a pretty okay season for me. And 
He said, there's about 200 FBS, FCS programs that you're definitely going to find at home. So I said, you know, I, I think I got a shot at this, especially since that season I had to snap in three shoulder braces where I couldn't lift my head, lift my hands above my helmet, which was, that was interesting. And <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I started going to camps and then I started getting looked at a little bit and I just kept working on it and working on it because I knew I had to snap the rest of the four, three years of high school. And, I just kept getting good at it. Then I got, after my sophomore season, I got invited to uh, the Chris Rubio's Vegas event, which is the hugest long stopping event in the country. And I got an invitation now and said, this is the way I prove myself. And then I went there and I ranked um, ninth out of the class of 2019, which was the sophomore then. So I said, okay, like, wow, I actually really got a shot. And I kept working. I kept going to the park in my neighborhood. I stopped to, I used to talk to my parents. I've all started hurting my parents' hands, so I got a metal net. So I kept breaking the straps on the metal net when my ball hit it. And so <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that for about three years. Keep doing, I'm still doing it. Well, it's it's unbelievable. Um, all right. Uh, as I said, you're a big guy. And I would encourage people, uh, when you went on your official visit to Alabama, you go to your Twitter account, uh, which is at Gabriel Pew 74 and you've got a, a picture there from when you were on your visit and also when you gave your commitment of you and your Alabama uniform when you were on your visit. And, folks, uh, <laughs> Gabriel, it looks like he's a college uh, starting college offensive lineman right now. I mean, you are put together. You are a big, strong young man. What are the possibilities? Uh, because obviously you're going you're gonna to focus on long snapping. I mean, Thomas Fletcher, when he's gone, I know you want to be the guy that steps in and takes over that role. But have you had any discussions with Alabama about trying to play the offensive line as well? Is that something that you want to look into doing, or are you stick strictly going to specialize or focus on snapping? Oh, we talked about that a little bit with I'm uh, talking to the special teams coordinator, Coach Banks, and he was saying that if I did play another position, then that would be fine. I would um, basically do warm up with I'd warm with offensive line or tight ends or wherever he wanted to put me, and. I would just practice with them, and during 7-on-7, seven seven, I would warm up for long staff and do their pawn and stuff in period, and I'd go back to position. And I just, with knee braces and the size I have to be to be able to play at that level, I've asked them what's the chances that I can do both on this level. That it's pretty hard, but it's doable. But if you did go play in a position, I would let you do the first semester, and I would evaluate, you, evaluate it, the situation, see if you were good enough to play Offensive line or wherever you play, I let you play that. And I recruit our snapper, but he said right now I just want you to focus on long snapping. Yeah, and I didn't even think about that, but you're right. I mean, you've got to keep your flexibility, your obviously your snap time. I didn't think about you know you try to bulk up to over 300 pounds, and as you said, wearing the knee braces that the offensive linemen wear that could hamper your snapping. So that's I'm glad you informed us of that. You've got to you you got to because let's be honest, uh, the ball's got to get to the holder or the punter in a certain amount of time, and if you can't deliver it, then you're not going to be snapping, right? It's pretty simple. They put the stopwatch on you, and you got to do it. Uh, it's got to get there, right? Yes, sir. I mean, I have snapped the knee braces before, but I've not been through 20 pounds yet, so I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work. Yeah, but, that's, um... <laughs> that's something to, to, to think about there. I got to be on the broadcast of the Alabama-Mississippi High School All-Star Game, and you played for the Alabama team. I know that was a thrill. But also, you received the 2018 Bubba Trotman Service Above Self Award from the Montgomery Rotary Club um, back in December prior to that game. And, um, I, you know, tell me about that. I mean, that is a, such a high honor. Uh, give me a little bit of insight and our listeners a little bit of insight of what that war- award represents. I mean, Service Above Self kind of says it all. And... Um, you know, what that felt like to, to receive that? Oh, it was, it was extraordinary. Uh, about a month before the game, my pastor said, I've been talking to people in Montgomery about this potential scholarship. He said scholarship, but I think he was talking, he was talking about the uh, award and said, okay. I said, okay. He said he told me, he told them about the stuff I did. I was, uh, I helped fundraise my teammate whose mom got cancer. Well, he got cancer and, with all the payments and stuff, and his mom couldn't work, so we hosted a dodgeball tournament and a spaghetti dinner at our church for that, and just some other stuff that I did with my church. And so when I went over there, it was the day of the game, and so instead of watching the movie, it was me and two other guys who were the finalists, and we drove over to the Rotary Club, and so we sat down, and he, some people gave a brief 
explanation of what we've done and what our careers were like. And then in the end, they chose me. I was just very thankful and kind of overwhelmed just because of the people who won that award previously. I, I thought the things I did was stuff I was supposed to do, you know, just not really something to glorify me, just something to glorify God and do, just do what I was supposed to do the entire time. Yeah, well, it, it speaks to your character, and, and congratulations on that. Hey, I want to ask you, you about uh, your experience in Northridge. I've, I've gotten to know Coach Vickery a little bit. And of course, he comes from a great coaching family. His dad, legendary high school coach, uh, he's a good man. Uh, what's that experience been like playing football for uh, Mike Vickery there at Northridge? Man, my, Mike Vickery, he was like kind of a madhouse when he got here because with rezoning of our – most of our players getting rezoned to mm-hmm. Bryan. We, lost, we only had 22 returning players. And so a lot of people who played football never played football for or were freshmen. And so he really just taught us the Bama way. And if we messed up, he didn't feel bad for us. He said, this is the way you do it. And whatever punishment came next, came next. So he's made us, he's made us work harder than any other team in the state. I'm convinced of that. If we had practice, if we had practice lights on our practice field, we practice at 10 o'clock. And I'm, if he was allowed to do that, I'm sure we would do that every day. <laughs> he wants us to be in that type of program. And just the, his workouts and his mentality that he brings to the table, it's just all great. And I can't wait to see what this team does in the future. And now uh, you get to go play for the greatest college football coach in the country, uh, Nick Saban. It, has that hit you yet? Do you pinch yourself and say, I'm going to be playing for Nick Saban? I mean – uh, what's that like, you know, as a, as a 17, 18 year old young man to have this opportunity to play for the goat? Um, uh, is that something you've come to, you've come to terms with yet? Oh, uh, not really. It was just, I never really thought of it, thought about it that way. I just know that when I get there, I'm just going to work my butt off. I'm not really expecting anyone to say anything to me or you know, just saving to notice me really. I'm just trying to, I just want to do my job and that's really all I'm concerned about right now. I hear you. That's a great attitude to take. What about your parents? Uh, I heard you yesterday at your press conference, uh, your signing day ceremony, talking about what they've meant to you and and uh, how they helped guide you to, to this point. Uh, listen, man, you're, you're a great young man, and that starts with great parenting. Uh, uh, tell me about your parents and their influence on your on your uh, life so far. Uh, they've been tremendous, tremendous parents, and I don't think I could do any of this without them. Just I've been to. Tampa, Florida, to Los Angeles, California, and even the boats of Montana going to camps, whether it be a college camp or a Chris Rubio camp or a Coles camp. And they have just been they just supporting me in every decision possible. If I needed something to help me, they would, no question, just do whatever they needed to help me. And even the tough days, and the, they really pushed me through it. And just when my sophomore year, when I started losing – 15, 16 pounds of sweat of practice in about three hours. And it starts cramping up. The stuff gets tough. And I really, really thought about quitting just because I didn't think I could make it. And they said, you got to do the worst part. You just got to keep pushing through it. I promise God's plan for you. And that's really what made me through the season. I mean, my sophomore season, I kept bringing that to the table my junior and senior year, just never quitting, never giving up. And they've been great parents. I'm very thankful to have them. What are you going to major in at Alabama? Do you know yet? Yes, sir. I'm uh, going to start out in civil engineering. I might specialize in something else after my um, sophomore year, but right now it's civil engineering. Outstanding. Well, Gabriel, congratulations, and uh, we're happy for you. It's I think it's always great as a sportscaster here when I see uh, a local football player or a local athlete, period, uh, get the chance to go to Alabama because Alabama recruits, as you know, nationwide, and and, um, you know, when somebody that, that grows up here and, and uh, lives here gets the chance to play at Alabama, I think it's a great thing for the community and uh, everybody that's associated with uh, this area. So congratulations and thanks a lot for joining us. And get back to your workout, man. All right. Thank you so much.